Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. 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 by the glory. Hallelujah. Revive us again. Yeah. Amen. Let us pray. Father, you were telling us that when the Spirit of the truth comes, you will lead us into all the good. Lord, we thank you tonight that you are the administrator, you are our life, and you are our counselor. And Lord, I just pray that as you have opened our hearts and opened our ears, will you come with your word, and will you, do, O oh Lord, counsel us, O oh Lord Jesus. Will you administrate your word in our hearts, O oh God, that we will know, O oh Lord Jesus, more about revival. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name we pray. Mm -hmm. Amen. Our topic um, this evening is revive us again, O oh Lord. What does it mean for us to be revived again by the Lord? The word revive means to return to consciousness of life, to become active, to flourish again, to restore to life, to resuscitate, to be quickened and to be renewed. It is almost <clears throat> a fresh inflow of life and power. When we think of revive, we think of something that used to be full of life. But somewhere along the way, something has happened, and now we need restoration. The Holy Spirit brings back to life something which once had life, but now it doesn't. John 11, 25, Jesus says to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. To be revived by God, it is the awakening or the quickening of God's people to their true nature and purpose. Once we were dead in our trespasses and sin, but God sent the Redeemer, our Lord Jesus, to pay the price, to buy back our salvation because he has a plan for our lives. God has a plan for our lives, and regardless our current situation, he can work through every situation to prosper us and to give us a hope and a future. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says, For I know the plan I have towards you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a hope and a future. Hallelujah. God said that he knows the plans. He knows the plans. He is the only one who will decide the way which he already has for each and every one of us. God has a good goal towards us. And it is his desire that the children are fulfilling their purpose. That he has for us to flourish and to walk in victory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And even if we are not at the place where we should be in the Lord, he knows where we are, but we, but he wants us to ask for help. We can cry out to him for help, for him to revive and quicken us in him again, and he will restore us to our rightful place in him. Psalms 85, verse 6 to 8. Verse 6. Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice to you? Verse 7. Show us your unfailing love, Lord, and grant us your salvation. Verse 8. I will listen to what God, the Lord, says his promise. Peace to his people, his faithful servants, but let them not return to foolishness. 
The children of Israel have been sent to Babylon for 70 years because they have sinned against the Lord. They have now been restored to their land. But after they returned, their hearts are still not right with the Lord. The years in captivity has taken a toll on them. They had lost their joy. So David calls out to the Lord for help on the behalf of the children of Israel. To have the fullness of joy in the Lord, we need to be revived. When we are revived, God shows his mercy towards us. The psalmist is crying out to the Lord on the behalf of Israel. He is conscious of the fact that they cannot rejoice in the Lord or let they have been revived. I will listen. I will listen to what God, the Lord, says. He has promised peace to his people, his faithful servants, but let them not return to folly. In order to be revived, we need to have been obedient to the voice of God. Listen and do what the Lord says. So after we have cried out to the Lord for help and he delivers us, we need to maintain the relationship with the Lord by spending time in his word, meditating in his word, making him the center of everything we do. Think in his will and ask in the Holy Spirit to empower us every day to live a life through Christ Jesus. This situation that the children of Israel were facing can apply to the church today. There are many whose hearts are not where it should be in the Lord, but we can cry out to the Lord as the psalmist cried out for the children of Israel. To remove every spot and wrinkle, to bring restoration. We can call out to the Lord for our individual needs, whatever they may be tonight. Or we can call out to the Lord on the behalf of others, as the psalmist called out to the Lord on the behalf of Israel. There may be people around us who, for example, are suffering from depression. They have lost their enthusiasm for life, perhaps not even wanting to get out of bed in the morning, are living in a chronic environment and seem to have no hope. But there is always hope in Jesus. Amen. And we can intercede on the behalf. We can cry out to the Lord for these people who may be in the body of Christ. It could be our family members, it could be our children. Some are away in university and facing great challenges. Another need may be for those who have become complacent in the Lord and have become lukewarm. Another need may be for those who are showing no conviction in the Lord. But as the psalmist cried out for the children of Israel, we can cry out for the body of Christ for our communities, for our families. And we know he will hear us. He is attentive to our pride. He will hear and answer our prayers. Let's look at a few scriptures that gives us assurance that he answers prayers. Psalm 34, verse 6. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. Not some, but out of all. Psalms 34, 15, the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their cry. Psalm 116, verse 1, I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplication, because he has inclined his ear unto me. Therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. Amen. We thank God for revival power of the Holy Spirit. And only the Holy Spirit can bring revival. In Acts 2, there was an outpouring. Acts 2 verse 1. When the day of Pentecost came, they were together in one place. Suddenly, as like the sound of a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. It is the Holy Spirit that revives or quickens us for a new life. 
so that we can become effective in the kingdom of God. As the disciples went to the pond, the Lord in the upper room, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they were revived, quickened, and empowered, and did great exploits for the Lord. Peter preached a powerful sermon, and 3,000 people got saved by the power of the Holy Spirit. The disciples became bold and courageous and full of the Holy Spirit. They were able to heal the sick, raise the dead, and cast out demons in the name of the Lord. Acts 2.43 Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. This is what happens when revival comes. The disciples were called the ones that turned the world upside down. When revival comes, we too can do great exploits for the Lord. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is also reigning in us, in you, and in me, and can and will do the work through us. The Lord has promised that he will pour out his spirit on Israel, his people once again. Amen. In Joel 2, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Joel 2, 28 to 32, verse 28. And afterwards, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Verse 30. I will show wonders in the heavens and on earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. 31. The sun will turn to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. For on Mount Zion in Jerusalem, there will be deliverance, as the Lord has said, even the survivors whom the Lord calls. As the Lord calls out his spirit, there shall be prophesying signs and wonders in all the earth. On say will cry out to the Lord, rescue me and save me. Young men shall see visions and dream dreams. So as the church of God continue to abide in Jesus, in love and unity, we shall live in great expectation that the Holy Spirit will bring another windstorm that will unleash an outpouring of the Holy Spirit that will resuscitate and revive and will rescue the church in our nation. Amen. That many will repent and cry out to be saved. The Holy Spirit is important for the church for revival. In John 3 verse 8, the wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear it sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. It talks about the importance of the Holy Spirit in revival of the church today. Jesus points out to Nicodemus that the Spirit of God is like a wind that blows where it pleases. This is the same Holy Spirit that brought a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, that baptized the disciples with the Holy Spirit and with fire as they waited in the upper room on that day of Pentecost. And one of the promises of God for us today is to pour out his spirit upon us, which signifies a powerful rainfall in abundance, a fresh outpouring of the spirit and power. Let's look at Genesis. <coughs> Genesis 1, 2 to 3. Let's look at what the spirit of God was doing then. Verse 2. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Verse 3. And God said, let there be light. 
and there was light. The wind of God has hovered over the face of the waters and then moved over the face of the earth. In Exodus 14, verse 21 to 22, we see the liberating power of the Spirit of God. Then Moses stretched out his hands over the sea, and all that night the Lord drove back the sea with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided, verse 22, and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. The liberating prayer of God blows back the sea and gives the Israelites a safe path to cross over so they can walk on dry land. Ezekiel 37, 5 to 10. This is what the sovereign Lord says to those bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. Verse 6. I will attach tenders to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I, verse 7, so I promise as I was commanded and as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and bones came together, bone to bone. Verse 8, I looked and tenders and flesh appeared on them and skin covered them. But there was no breath in them. Verse 9. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, breathe from the four winds and breathe into these slain, that they may live. So, verse 10. So I prophesied as he commanded me. And breath entered them, and they and came to life, and stood up there, a vast army. The life-giving spirit blows across the valley of dry bones, and the spirit, the wind of God, breathes into the dry bones, and the dry bones came back to life. And so tonight, we thank God for the amazing resurrecting work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. It is the Holy Spirit that revives and quickens us for a new life so that we can be partakers and participants and partners in Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit imparts life to the dead person. Paul said, if the Holy Spirit dwells in us, which indeed is the case, then the same spirit who revived Jesus will revive our mortal body tonight. Amen. Romans 8, 11. The spirit of God who raises Jesus from the dead lives in you and in me. And just as God raised Jesus from the dead, he will give life to our mortal bodies by the same spirit living within us. As we look at the early as we looked at it earlier, the Holy Spirit brings back to life something which once had life, but now does not. So if there is any area in our lives tonight, the Holy Spirit will resuscitate. Amen. 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 If there is any area in our bodies of, of Christ that is in need of awakening, quickening, the Holy Spirit he is right here, right now. The same power of the Holy Spirit that raised Jesus is living in each and every one of us. Amen. Revival only happens when we are prepared. Amen? Amen? Amen. When we are prepared for revival, that is how it happens. But it happens by us coming under deep conviction repenting and confessing and crying out to the Lord. In 2 Chronicles 7, verse 14, it says, If my people who are called by my name 
will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. He has promised he will heal our lands and forgive us of our sins. Revival does not occur outside of the atmosphere of prayer. Revival does not occur outside the atmosphere of prayer. And as we look and we see that the disciples was in that upper room, they were praying and they were in expectation. And we know what took place. There was a shaking, there was a rumbling. There was a windstorm that swept through. And as it came through, each and every one of the disciples clothes of fire was deposited upon their head. And we know that they began to speak in tongues, each and every one of them. The Holy Spirit wants to stir, stir us up tonight and bring an unquenchable thirst in our hearts. In Romans 8, 26, it says this, like the Spirit also helps in our weakness, but we do not know what we shall pray, for as we ought to, but the Holy Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groaning, which cannot be uttered. Hallelujah. Amen. So as we begin to groan, as we begin to stretch our hearts, hallelujah, we don't know what to pray, but the Holy Spirit knows what to and how to pray. When an individual is groaning, they're in great pain. They might move to the left, they might move to the right, they might bend and they stand. But the pain is so severe. So Paul used this to speak to the body of Christ. So as we begin to groan, as we begin to pray, we know that the Holy Spirit will have his way. Philippians 4, 6 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. When we're in supplication, we're crying out earnestly, hallelujah. This is all leading to revival. Romans 15, 30 says, Now I beg you, brethren, through the Lord Jesus Christ and through the love of God, of the Holy Spirit, that you strive. When we strive, we're making efforts, efforts in prayer. Isaiah 40, 31. But those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The Holy Spirit wants to activate us tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. As we wait upon him like they waited in that upper room. Some may say tonight, I don't know how to pray. Well, that's exactly what the disciples uh, said in Luke 11, verse 1. As Jesus just finished prayer, the disciples came to him and said, Lord, teach us how to pray like John taught his disciples. Today, we're still saying, teach us how to pray. Every time we kneel, we stand, we go to pray, we're saying, Lord, teach us how to pray. And as we wait on the Lord tonight, we're waiting for expectation, for revival. The Lord wants to quicken us tonight. He wants to unleash his Holy Spirit to quicken us. He wants to accelerate us by the power of his Holy Spirit that we can go into our communities, go into our towns, our villages, that we can go by the highways and byways, compelling others as we are filled with the reviving power of our Lord Jesus Christ to quicken our communities, to resuscitate them, to bring them back to life. Yes. Yes. So tonight, he is able to bring us back to life. May the Lord bless you, Amen. and may his face 
continue to shine upon us. God bless. Let's pull, don't go down. Let's be the fair end. Even it's going to get sweeter and sweeter. I can assure you. Even at this time, as we call on our senior minister, who's come all the way.